Rivers and the inhabitants of the watery element are for wise men to contemplate whilst fools pass by without consideration. Salt marshes are really exciting because they bridge the land and the sea. So they're intertidal habitats, so everything that lives there has to cope with being land-based, so being exposed to the air and exposed to the sea regularly. So they're really specialist environments and that's what makes them really, really special. I'm Becky Foyle and I'm married to Richard and we have lived in this area for over 40 years. Bill Johnson, I've come since 1964 but my love of the rivers of Somerset has been with me since I was a teenager. I'm Dr Hannah Mossman. I'm a reader in restoration ecology at Manchester Metropolitan University and I'm a seconded as a research fellow with WWT. My name's Andy Darch and I farm out here with the beef cattle and also live in the village. I'm Alison Jacobs. I'm a full-time artist and I've had a long association with Steart Marshes and I, I love to be here and I love to paint here. Salt marshes are really, really good at storing carbon and they store carbon at a faster rate than forests. But that's really hard to see, isn't it? Because you can see the carbon in trees. There's the tree there that stores carbon. That's easy to understand. But in salt marshes, the carbon's actually stored in the mud itself. So the mud is trapping that carbon and locking it away and burying it. So whilst there may be, it looks like mud, it's actually a really, really good carbon store. I think salt marsh restoration can work for farmers. I think as farmers, we need to take every opportunity we can to highlight what a fantastic job we do in this country in producing brilliant beef while really helping to Im improve nature and hopefully restoring carbon back into the ground through absorbing it onto blue carbon areas. Here at Stuart Marshes, in the first uh, eight years since it was restored, there's over a million cubic metres of mud have been stored here. And in that, there's over 25,000 tonnes of organic carbon. I think the, the salt marsh story is a fascinating one. It's been completely transformed. I love the texture here now of all the different plants and the lagoons and salt marsh but to see how successful this reserve has been and the amount of wildlife here and the the whole avocet story as well is just really just heartwarming well at the start i was a little bit skeptical i thought we've got all this lovely farmland growing food for people i know for some people that they may be expectations that there'd be some kind of magnificent blue lagoon so they, they find the the muddy, swampy kind of look of it are a little bit difficult. And I think that the more they're educated about what's actually going on with it and why it's like that and why it's good for the environment. Now it's redeveloping it for the animals. I think our balance is clearly well worthwhile. My family were, were fairly pleased because it offered a, a little bit more defence from the river than we would have previously had. It has to be a fine balance between being a, a haven for wildlife and for well-being for people. We've walked the marshes lots and lots and over those years what's brought us back is the bird life, the insect life and the plant life. I think it has been good for the community. It's obviously been good for us. We've had the opportunity to farm. I also like to walk the marshes with friends and family. That's, uh, that's what I really enjoy and I'm very proud of it. I feel quite emotional when I think about that side of things. What I love about the salt marsh here at WWT Steer is coming out in the evenings and, and checking the cattle and being able to cycle the boys through the marshes to school in the morning and just enjoying everything out here it's a lovely place to be. When I live down here, I, I go out every day in all its different moods. So that's what keeps me happy as an artist. And uh, yeah, there's, there's always something new to paint here. So well, it's such important habitats, both for people and wildlife. And the two things that we should do is we should protect what we have and value it. And we should create more of them so that we can really value and have so much more salt marsh. I think what we have here now is 
far more important. I, I like you very much indeed. It's a great asset to the village and Somerset. <laughs>